Young People's Literature finalist, Albert Marin. Flesh and Blood So Cheap, The Triangle Fire and Its Legacy, published by Alfred A. Knopf, an imprint of Random House's children's books. Good evening. On March 25th, 1911, a fire at the Triangle Factory near Washington Square, which is only a few blocks south of where we are tonight, took the lives of 146 garment workers, mostly young Italian and Jewish immigrant women. Soon afterward, reformers asked the young social worker named Francis Perkins to lobby lawmakers in Albany to pass strong fire safety laws. Here is what happened. In Albany, the state capital, lawmakers listened to Perkins' ideas, nodded agreement, smiled, and did nothing. She was getting nowhere fast. Then she met the man known as the gorgeous knight of the brown derby and the cut cigar. Alfred E. Smith, was a child of the Lower East Side. Al, as everyone called him, stood five feet seven inches, had a pink face and a pickle nose. Born to an Irish mother and an Italian-German father, he identified most with his Irish heritage. Growing up in the shadow of the Brooklyn Bridge, he, like the other boys, pitched pennies, played stickball, and in summer, dove off piers into the East River. That took, some, that took a strong stomach, as an old timer explained. The only recreation was to go down to the East River, where the barges were. The people would swim in it, but they also moved their bowels there. Al spoke in the accent of the streets, Woids, like Woike, foist, poisonly, an avenue, tumbled off his tongue as he strolled the sidewalks of New York. And he spoke with food in his mouth, spraying bystanders. <laughs> Forced to quit school and find a job after his father's death, the eighth grade dropout boasted that he held degrees with honors from two of the world's finest schools, the Fulton Fish Market and the College of Hard Knocks. <laughs> Starting as a schlepper, a porter, in the Fulton Fish Market, no place for sissies, Al graduated to running errands for local Tammany Hall bigwigs. They liked the brash teenager who told hilarious jokes and spat on the floor between puffs of a huge cigar that seemed glued to the corner of his mouth. Yet he was also a go-getter, an organizer with a knack for making friends. Smith rose through Tammany's ranks. A shrewd political operator, he became majority leader of the New York State Assembly. Uh, eventually, he would become a four-term governor of New York State. Unlike corrupt Tammany bosses, however, he had real sympathy for the poor. Al understood what doctors bill, how doctors' bills could burn up a family's savings, forcing it deeper into debt, and how children became adults without having a pair of new shoes. Immigrant Jews called him an Irish mensch, literally an Irish man. But mensch means more than a man. It means a real man, a good guy with a heart of gold. When, for example, he saw bullies throw rocks at a peddler, Al said nothing. Instead, he put his arm around the old fellow as if he were a brother. That was a signal to the bullies. Leave him alone, or Tammany will fix you. <laughs> Tragedy brought out the best in Al Smith. Many Triangle Fire victims lived in his district. That night, he told Francis Perkins, he visited the tenements where they had lived 
to tell their families of his sympathy and grief. Toward midnight, he went to the morgue to help grieving families identify their loved ones. It was a human, natural, decent thing to do, Perkins recalled, and it was a sight he never forgot. Smith gave Perkins some advice. Bringing reform requires more than fine speeches by well-meaning people. It requires politics. And that means getting the state legislature to set up its own investigating commission. If the legislature does it, Al said, the legislators will listen to their reports and the legislature will do something about it. Otherwise, reform will just get the cold shoulder. He was right. The commission, with Smith in charge and Perkins as chief investigator, studied factory conditions, uh, not only in garment factories, but through all industry in New York State. Factory visits upset the commissioners, as Perkins intended they should. But there's nothing like saying things for oneself. Those visits, she said, changed Smith's life, his outlook, and the whole direction of his career. They made him more of a mensch than ever before. Thank you.